Good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday. Hello, 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 hello all over the world. Hello all over the world. I am so grateful this morning for you joining us. I am so grateful for you taking just a few moments out of your time and, and just sharing with us. Um, wherever you are logging in from, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to say hello. I want you to say hello. And then I want you to do me another huge favor. Please take the next step this morning. And share this message, please, with someone, because I believe that someone right at this moment is right on the edge. And honestly, they need you. They need you to sow this message into their life, to bring the change that is absolutely necessary. They're sitting on the edge and they're waiting for something to shift it. And you could be the very changing factor in someone's life by just taking the steps and sharing this broadcast this morning. So... Again, I say to you, hello and good morning. Um, I, I am I am such in a, a space right now with God. And I pray and believe that, that you're in this place as well, uh, where you're expecting God to do something so much greater than even what you're experiencing right at this current moment. I, I, I am praying that you're that you're literally on the edge of your seat. And, and you can see, God, I know that there's something that is on the rise for me. There is something that is right on the rise for me. I know so many of you right now are sitting there where it's like, I, I, I can feel it. I, I can sense it, but it hasn't happened. But I know that it's there. That's where you are. This is the moment of a shift. This is the moment of a complete turn. This is the moment of a complete turn for you. I believe that this moment was ordained by God. You're not watching this morning just because you got on or because someone invited you, but this was a divine assignment. This was a divine assignment by God to line you up with this moment. You know, there are many things that you could be doing right this very moment. There are many places that you could be, many things that you could be doing. For many of you, you are probably in the middle of doing something and, and something prompted this moment. Something prompted this moment. What prompted this moment? It was the God of your salvation. It was the orchestrated moment by the universe and by heaven and by earth that shifted so that you could hear this message, so that you could walk fully into what God has planned and what God has purposed for a time such as right now. So I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you and I'm excited for what's getting ready to occur in your life. I'm excited for where you're getting ready to go. So good morning. I, I want to I read this scripture to you, and then I want to share a conversation with you. The scripture I want to read for you this morning is, is in Luke chapter number uh, 15. Luke chapter number 15, and it is verse number 22 through verse number 24, the two verses of scripture. <laughs> Listen to what the word says. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, meaning restore him, restore him, restore him, quickly restore him. Verse number 23 says, uh, and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. I'll go ahead and read the next verse. It says, for this is my son. My son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And then they begin to celebrate. And then they begin to celebrate. Well, I, I want to share with you that you are in the moment and in the season of your life that you are going to celebrate. This season for you is about celebration. Uh, you know, I have a friend um, and, and, and we often joke and laugh about a particular show um, the have and have nots. Uh, we often laugh about this show because um, I, in watching this show, it's almost like they get stuck in a plot. Um, and and for anybody who has watched the have or have nots by Tyler Perry, um, you, you know, you can go two weeks without watching the show and you can just pick it back up and you would know exactly what scene they're in. You know what they're still talking about. It's like they get stuck in this plot. They get stuck in this plot. And, and many times I, I've recognized and realized that plots get stuck with authors that are writing stories because many times they feel as though either the character has not clearly explained or revealed itself 
in a particular plot or as though the audience may not clearly see exactly the intended plot of this particular scene. And, and so it is in our life where we go through these cycles and we go through these seasons, we go through these different stages that, that it seems like a plot is stuck, where, where it's a revolving cycle of the same thing. We see this in, in David's life. We see this in Joseph's life. We see this in Paul's life. Each of them have a different experience of a plot that seems to be recycling over and over again. Well, with Paul, it was being stuck almost in prison. And, and even when he was not stuck in the prison, Paul explained it best when Paul said, I am still imprisoned to God. I am in chains and I am shackled to God. I am in shackled to the gospel. I am in shackled, in essence, to my purpose. And so no matter where I am and no matter what situation I am in, I am shackled to the purpose of God for my life and through my life, that no matter what position I am in, that, that there is a lesson that is being taught, a lesson that is being learned, or a lesson through me that is being revealed to those that are around me. We, we see this with Joseph, where Joseph, he, he is treated differently than his brothers, and in every scenario, that treatment it remains that there is a higher level of treatment that happens from his father. There is a higher level of treatment that brings him out of the pit. There is a higher level of treatment that keeps him in this prison. But yet there are these revolving cycles that happen. And in each scenario and in each situation, God reveals to Joseph that you are marked and you are chosen. That, that no matter where he's placed, something constantly causes him to rise to the top. Something constantly causes him in every scenario to always come out. And while he's stuck in, there is a glory that is revealed through his life like no other. We see this with David, where, where David is, is anointed and, and yet he has to go back through a scenario of dealing with sheep, dealing with the dung, dealing with brothers that did not like him, that, that, that were at, at opposition against him. And then as he rises to position and he has his own children, he, he recognizes this even with his son, that there is a constant war, a constant plot, but God always allows him to rise to the next position. And such as it is with you where so many of you right now are in stages of your life that it seems like these stages continue to just go on. It seems like you're, you're sitting in a plot, you're sitting in a plot that, that, that seemingly has no end. But I came this morning to share the message that the plot, it does have an end. That the plot actually has an end and the end point is the position of you actually learning what needs to be learned or revealing what needs to be revealed to you and also through you. That as you are going through your moments in these seasons and it feels hopeless and, and in some situations and in some scenarios, it really does not make sense. And in some places of your life, you're, you're, you're literally beating your head up against the wall because you wish with everything that it would just change. And for many of you, you are praying and praying and you're asking God, just fix it. Just do it. God, please bring it to pass. Please make it to happen. But, but yet, it's almost like the have and have nots. You know that the next day when you wake up, you're at the same place all over again. That, 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 that it has not changed. And that is because, my friends, there is something so great about this place that is designed just for you to reveal through you and to you something greater that God wants you to see about yourself. No, God has not forsaken you. God has not left you. His, his eyes have not been taken off of you. His love is still there for you. And he's not going to leave you even in this place. And I, and I know, I know sisters, I know my brothers, I know my friends. 
I know that you are in the place where you are like me and my friends and you are tired of looking at this same scene. But I'm going to tell you what I know about the author. The author of your faith, the author of your life, the creator of your existence and your purpose is trying to produce a scene inside of you and, and it has to be produced through what you are experiencing right now. There is something about this place that is developing the character in you. There is something about where you are right now that is developing the character in you. And I need to allow you to know that this place is not to kill you. This place is not to destroy you. This place is not to rip you apart like a lion or like a tiger that is trying to destroy its place. But this, this is pray, but this place is designed for your good. It is designed for your good. The Bible tells us and reminds us over and over again that all things, yes, they do. They work together. Independently, no. They don't feel good independently. But together, they work for your good. David, when he looks back, he can understand, this is why I had to go through this, just to get here. Joseph, when he looked back, he could understand, this is why I was stuck in that place, because I had to get here. And you, you will be able to say, this is why I had to go through that. Because when the scene changes, it will all make sense. It will all be revealed. Nothing that you have experienced in this season will be wasted. One of the things I laugh at about, about, about having have nots is he wastes a lot of scenes. He introduces things that he never follows up on. I'm not talking about the show because I like to watch it, but there are a lot of scenes that are introduced that they go nowhere. They have absolutely no point. There are so many characters that we met in that show that didn't have any relevance, but that will not be your life. Everything that you have experienced, every feeling that you have felt, every rejection, every no, every denial, every time you laid in your bed and you cried when nobody else knew, every time you painted a smile on your face and you encouraged everybody else around you when nothing was happening in your life, that will be used. Where you are going in this next season, every bit of everything will be used. What I need you to do is the same thing, the same thing that the prodigal son did in that story that we read from Luke chapter 15. He came to himself and he remembered that he had already been marked. I need to say this to you as a prophetic declaration. Where you are, the season that you have been in, no matter how difficult it looks, no matter how backwards it looks to everybody else around you, no matter how much it looks like you're going the wrong direction, no matter how much it looks like God has forgotten you, no matter how much it looks like, why am I here and what is going on? Because I can hear some of you making that statement. You've been marked. The plot is ultimately to bless you and to reveal in you and through you who you are and who God is inside of you. You will see the demonstration of knowing the levels of anointing and power and strength and love and healing and joy that you have within you. Be not dismayed, whatever betides. God is taking care of you. He is the sovereign God that is above all. And one thing he will not do is leave you.
comfortless. The comforter is with you. What you're facing and dealing with. This did not come to destroy you. This did not come to kill you. I laid in the hospital bed with tubes in my stomach, tubes in my side, missing ribs, uh, 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 rods in my back, screws in my back, laying there. All types of tubes in my neck, IVs in my arms, and I laid there. And I said, this did not come to kill me. The doctor called me three months later. And she says to me, I can tell you this now. I couldn't tell you before. But I thought. We all thought that you were going to die. But somehow you made it. It wasn't somehow. What I knew is that I was not going to die there. I may die, but it wasn't going to be then. And it was not going to be right there. And that is what I've come to tell you. You are not going to die until you see everything that God said would be yours. You will not die until you hold the promise in your hand. I know that it hurts. I know you don't like this place. I know that you don't like it. I know that you don't like it. But I've came to remind you, you will not die until you hold it in your hands. Glory to our God, the keeper of your soul. And he's going to keep you. The best thing that I love about God is that he kept me. As I laid in that bed, he kept me. I was angry about the process of not being able to walk. Oh, come on. Shebe But he allowed me not to just walk. But every day I go to the gym and I'm running on the treadmill. I'm lifting more weights than I've ever lifted in my life. You would never know that I experienced what I experienced. Except I have the scars on my back. It reminds me that God is a keeper. And he will never let you die where you are. Not until he has accomplished the good work inside of you. He that begun the good work, he will see it all the way through. Be encouraged, my friends. Be encouraged and know without a shadow of a doubt that the scene is going to change and the story is going to make sense. I'm going to say that again. The scene is going to change and the story is going to make sense. Take courage, my soul. God will take care of you. He has the angels dispatched all around you, Psalms 91. And they will not let you dash your foot against the stone. He that dwelleth in that secret place, you will abide under the shadow. What I know about the shadow is that it will stop the sun from burning you. I've learned that. I learned that he is the keeper of my soul. I've learned that. I've learned that come what may, God will take care of me. I've learned that even in the darkest moments, he is a light and he will give you peace. And he will lead you, Jeremiah 29, to an expected end. Oh, yes. This story has a point. Your life has a purpose. There is a point to all of this. And while today it may not make sense, all things will work together. 
and they will prove the good to those that love him. Don't allow people to discount you and discredit you because your path may be different. You know, I, I look at the prodigal son and, and his brother that stayed there. He wanted to dismiss him, but the father loved him. Your life and your path may be different. I hear this all the time. Your call was not a conference call. Your path may be different. Don't beat yourself up. Don't give up on yourself and don't give up on God. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because God won't give up on you. He will fight and fight. He will climb over every mountain and he will go through every single valley. He will fight whatever he has to fight just to get to you and to get you where you need to be. You are special to God. Remember I told you, you're not watching this this morning just because. This is a prophetic moment of declaration to you that your season is changing. Your season is changing right now. I need you to recognize that you have been marked. I want to give you the warning. Do not think that the season is going to change and everything's just going to be lovely. I, I must say this. Understand that the season will change and then you will enter another because the lessons must be learned. You have been sent to this earth. You did not just come through your mother. You were with God in heaven. You were with God in eternity. You were with him. He chose you and sent you. And as he sent you, he sent you fully equipped with everything that you needed to accomplish the job you were purposed to do. He is the potter. You are the clay. And he allows these things, these plots, these seasons to mold you, to get out of you what he put in you that only he knows. Isn't he a good God? Isn't he a loving father? I love him today. I thank you for this moment. And I hope that this message has truly resonated with you. I hope that everything I said, it touched something deep inside of your soul because I was talking to your spirit because the spirit man needs to rise up. You must become active again. If this message has resonated with you, just do me a favor. I want you to type right down in the chat, I got this. Hashtag, I got this. I got this. Just simply say that. I got this. I got this. If you are returning to God and if you feel the pulling of God once again and you need prayer, just simply say, I need prayer. One of our prayer team members will reach out to you and they will pray for you. They will pray for you and pray the power of God to be fresh and free in your life. I also invite you to sow. I invite you to sow because where you are blessed, please sow. So many times we hear messages from people and then we never say thank you. We never sow. And then we go on about our business. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to plant a seed today. So, so into this message that has blessed you, that has reached you, that has resonated with you and allow the seed to manifest fruit in your life. Thank you so much for taking a few moments of time with me. Thank you so much for investing into your destiny. Taking 30 minutes out of your day and tithing this, investing into your destiny. I love you, but he loves you best. Watch out. The season is shifting. And you, yeah, you got this. That's the plot. I love you so much. God bless you today.